Hopefully it's not going to be as cold as last night. It's 25 now in Peoria and skies are mostly clear as we overlook Peoria on the Brave Law Center camera. 19 now in Galesburg, 26 degrees in Bloomington normal. There are some clouds off to our west. They're going to filter in as the night goes on. It's going to level off our temps. And tomorrow, some of those clouds will stick around, but temperatures will be back into the low 40s. Got some pretty decent weather ahead. We'll have that forecast coming up. WMBD News at 10 starts now. Tonight, a service instead of student loans. How one Illinois senator wants to wipe not just current college debt, but prevent it in the future. Also, a silent night or five. The local organization forced to cancel a holiday fundraising tradition because of COVID. And saying goodbye to a Bartonville bakery, the village staple shutting down after four decades. But first tonight, COVID-19 patients filling hospitals across central Illinois, leaving workers questioning if this is the tipping point. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Mark Welp. And I'm Kimberly Eaton. Today, and nearly 1,200 people across the state are in intensive care battling COVID-19. WMBD's Austin Chick breaks down how local hospitals are now preparing for the worst. Local hospitals nearing the breaking point Tuesday night. ICUs full of COVID-19 patients battling the virus, while hospital administrators battle to keep their departments staffed and beds available. Generally speaking, we see anywhere from 80 to upwards of 90 to close to 100% capacity for ICU, which is concerning. Right now, 88% of ICU beds in McLean County taken. Tim Bassett with Carl Broman Medical Center says they're building backup plans as patients just keep coming. We can establish as many physical beds as we want, but if we can't provide the clinicians to provide the care at that bedside, then that's ultimately what our concern is at this time. In the Tri-County area, 53 patients in intensive care, doctors racing to save not just COVID patients, but those in their care for other illnesses too. Dr. Samir Sater with Unity Point Health says it's a compounding problem. It is concerning because we are running on a pretty high census right now. He says if that continues, the hospital could again have to pull back on elective surgeries like during the first wave of the pandemic in the spring. We are very reluctant to do that because we do know that people who delay their health care, ultimately we, we all pay a price. For now, both hospitals in limbo, administrators hinging their hopes on central Illinoisans masking up to help keep their numbers down. If we can expend an ounce in prevention, that saves us a pound in treatment. For WMBD News, I'm Austin Schick. Governor J.B. Pritzker saying today at his daily COVID-19 briefing, we won't start to see the uptick in cases from Thanksgiving until two or three weeks from now. He also says that once the vaccine is approved, the first doses will only be handed out to certain people. Vaccines, because of the limited numbers of them, will go almost all to healthcare workers, and if there are enough, then next to uh, those in long-term care facilities, the staff and the residents. Uh, but our anticipation at the moment is the numbers are small enough so that it won't go beyond those two populations and may not even get to all health care workers. If you'd like to watch the full press conference from today, you can find it on our website, ciproud.com. You won't hear the Salvation Army's red kettlebells for the next few days in Peoria. The Peoria Salvation Army reporting tonight the red kettlebells will go silent for at least five days because of COVID-19 exposure. Although the red kettles won't be in operation, you can still volunteer to ring bells over the next week. You can also donate online on the Salvation Army's website. So far, donations through the red kettles have raised, excuse me, have passed the amount raised this time last year. Unit 5 school district leaders announcing today, despite earlier optimism for in-person learning, all students will continue learning remotely until December 18th. Superintendent Dr. Kristen kendrick Michael says the uptick in COVID-19 cases in the community is too significant at this time to revert back to a hybrid model. The district was hoping to return to that method next week. She says Unit 5 is still committed to offering in-person instruction, but it has to be when health and safety conditions allow them to do so. We appreciate all that our parents are doing. I'm appreciative of all of our staff, and um, we really need everyone in the community to do their part to minimize the spread of COVID so we can have our kids back in school in January. During the second quarter, parents selected either hybrid in-person or fully remote. If you want your student to remain in the same learning environment, you don't need to do anything. 
If you want to change that choice, you will need to fill out a form in the Infinite Campus Parent Portal. District 87 students will continue their hybrid in-person learning for the rest of the semester. Now, this does not apply to 7th through 12th graders. As leaders stated earlier this year, those grades will be learning remotely this semester. All students will have the option of switching to a hybrid model next semester. However, the district will begin the spring with all students learning remotely and will remain that way until January 19th. New Year's celebrations tend to go beyond the family, and, and I'm really concerned about how that plays out over the course of a couple of weeks. We thought that was the better course of action. That way, um, people can get all of that quarantine done, and we should be ready to go on the 19th. And families once again have the option of choosing which learning method their child will participate in next semester. They're being asked to make that decision by Friday. Recently, Forbes reported Senate Democrats want President-elect Joe Biden to, quote, cancel student loans. Both Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer and Senate Senator Elizabeth Warren want Biden to forgive up to $50,000 worth of student loans. Senator Tammy Duckworth spoke with our own Matt Sheehan during On the Record today. She says she's a supporter of canceling student loans, but wants to see programs where college students can work or do some sort of service to lower the amount of tuition they have to pay. Right now, we, there's more student loan debt held in this country than there is credit card debt. That is not sustainable. Um, and what I have supported is we're moving towards a debt-free college. That's not free college, debt-free, so that you should be able to work your way through college like I did. Now, I work two jobs. Uh, I don't want anybody to have to work two jobs. And you should be able to work your way through college and have a college tuition be low enough that you can actually graduate college without debt. Senator Duckworth served in the Army and says the GI Bill is another option for future generations to get a college degree without going into debt. The man accused of shooting at a Peoria police officer in plain clothes last month in the courtroom. 26-year-old Leyland Howard is charged with aggravated discharge of a firearm and unlawful possession of a weapon by a felon. Peoria police say in November an officer spotted Howard getting into a car with a gun near MacArthur Highway. The plainclothes officer followed him in his car and when Howard stopped, he opened fire. Howard's bond is set at $100,000 and he's set to be back in court for an arraignment Thursday morning. East Peoria City Council sticking to the status quo. Commissioners voting not to raise the base level tax on property owners. Durante Matthews shows us how this will look for homeowners. Durante. Well, Mark, the city's commissioner of accounts and finance says the rate will be at 1.23 percent. However, he says taxes can still increase in other areas. He says there are 10 taxing bodies in the city that can fluctuate, but people shouldn't see an increase in the city corporate corporate tax. He says new properties on the city's tax roll have contributed to the city's increased revenue. The city has taken pride in that for over 20 years it has done the rate equivalent and tried to hold the amount that the citizens paid to the city tax rate equivalent and part of their strategy has always been the alternate revenues. Now, Hill says the alternative revenues include raising taxes in the business and levy district. He says uh, to help keep the, the tax rate the same as last year. In other finance news, the council voted to sh uh, have short-term rentals like Airbnbs pay similar taxes to hotels and motels. Kimberly? Durante, thank you. A years-long struggle for some community members in Bloomington might soon be over. The west side of the city has been designated a food desert by county leaders, but now some relief is on the way. As of today, the Market Street Plaza has been demolished, and tomorrow officials expect to break ground on a new project, hoping to make the space home to a grocery store, several retail businesses, and two community service agencies. Leaders will begin by constructing a project shed serving as a storage space during the winter months. It's expected to be completed by this weekend. All good things must come to an end. A local bake shop closing its doors after four decades in business. The cake shop in Bartonville ending business on December 22nd after serving the village for 43 years. Owners of the store saying COVID played a factor, 
but they had been planning to retire for some time. She says she's thankful for the support community members have shown her shop over the years. All my customers have, have Facebook and emailed us over and over that they're so sad we're going. So we just hope someone will take it, will buy it, and keep it going. Because it's, it's a functioning business. It's ready to go. And you can still order cakes before the 22nd. And the shop owner says she is selling inventory and she's hoping it's gone by closing day. Members are reaping benefits for trusting SEFQ with their cash, a $30 million dividend today distributed to account holders. The amount each member received was determined by dividends earned and interest paid during the first 11 months of this year. SEFQ's chief operating officer says this was made possible in part by strong financial results and member responsibility. The thanks really goes to the members for uh, the more that they participate uh, in the credit union, the more the, that we are able to do things like the extraordinary dividend. And uh, yeah, we just we just thank uh, members for their continued support, particularly in these challenging times. The COO says over the last 21 years, SEFQ has returned $350 million in dividends to members. Coming up in the dark, where police are now tracking a Christmas-like criminal. Yeah, temperatures today started off awfully chilly. Let's take a look at our almanac. Made a nice recovery, though. After starting off at 19, we hit a high 38 this afternoon. Should be a little warmer tomorrow and for the many days ahead. I'll have your forecast coming up next. You're watching WMBD News. Central Illinois Proud with Mark Welp, Kimberly Eaton, Chief Meteorologist Chris Yates with your local weather authority forecast. And Kurt Pegler with sports. This is WMBD News at 10. Closed captioning on WMBD, sponsored by Uftring Nissan. The unknown is not empty. It's a storm that crashes and consumes, replacing thought with worry. But one thing can calm uncertainty an answer. Uncovered through exploration, teamwork, and innovation. An answer that leads to even more answers. Mayo Clinic. You know where to go. If you dream it, we'll deliver it for Christmas at Academy of Screen Printing and Awards, Executive Gifts, Company Christmas Items, Grandma and Grandpa Sweatshirts, Direct to Garment Printing, your photo from your phone. Stop in and see us at Academy of Screen Printing and Awards. At Honda, we take the holidays seriously. With serious style and serious capability. So while others may be decking the halls, you could be dashing through the snow with the best value of the season. Now's the best time to get into a new Honda. KBB.com's best value brand for 2020. Visit Happy Honda Days at your local Honda dealer or shop online to get a great offer on the CRV. There is no possible way that I could have handled this without David Hunt. I've never had to deal with a lawyer before, and this is my first time, and I, I, I'll tell you what, the buck stops here with one man, and that's David Hunt. He's the best. Seeing the joy that people feel when they share a meal with family and friends, that's why we do this. The laughter of kids around the table, the thrill of families driving through for a treat, the delight of not having to cook, and instead, letting us safely serve you. It all comes back to taking care of each other. And for that, we'll be here with your favorites and always a smile. Hi, I'm Jeff. In my Johnsonville commercial, we open up in the forest. I'm out in the wild eating my breakfast and all of a sudden a raccoon come up and asked me are those bigger patties i said yep wolf comes in and says wow that's a lot of sausage and we had a good laugh about that <laughs> johnsville breakfast sausage has 15 percent larger patties fits on a biscuit the storm tracker sky cam network brought to you by linco precision ag technology solutions now, your local weather authority forecast from Chief Meteorologist Chris Yates. 
Well, it's another chilly night across central Illinois. Skies are mostly clear. Nice view on the American Pest Control camera overlooking downtown. The temperatures are a little chilly right now, but it is going to, at least those temperatures are going to start to level off before getting too cold. It's 19 in Galesburg, 24 degrees here in Peoria. I think we'll drop another few degrees before we see those temps uh, level off. 24 in Bloomington and LaSalle, Peru is at 25. The clouds are talking about, you can see them off to the west. You can see those clouds drifting from west to east across Missouri and Iowa, and it won't be long before they are here. And even though they're not very thick, they are going to do enough to keep temperatures from getting as cold as they were last night. A system we're going to keep an eye on is off to our west. It's beginning to develop in Colorado. More on that in just a moment. Meanwhile, the other system, which actually brought us all this cold to begin with, is still producing snow in New York, Pennsylvania, West Virginia. The heavier snows in Ohio finally starting to come to a close. They had some lake effect enhancement there on the back side of it, but that system moves out. There's another one developing. This one is going to intensify and really deepen over the next 24 hours, but it's not moving a whole lot. So some pretty good rain is expected across parts of Oklahoma, southeast Kansas, Missouri, down through Arkansas, Louisiana. On the back side of it, where there's enough cold air in place, we'll get some pretty good snow across Texas, the western parts of Oklahoma, and even out into Kansas by tomorrow night. As for the low temperatures tonight, temps into the teens and low 20s across the board here in Peoria. Around 21 we will be in the 40s tomorrow. Region wide Peoria looking at a high of 43. There will be some clouds coming and going, but it's not going to be a bad day by any stretch of the imagination. But if you are heading out that door tomorrow, yeah, be sure to bundle up. It's going to be a little chilly to start. We'll have some clouds. Temperatures, though, should thankfully get back into the low 40s, which is about typical or average for this time of year. Now, there is another system. That system will continue to watch. It's going to start to move a little bit Wednesday night into Thursday. But it starts to encounter some of that dry air that's in place, and it's just not going to have much luck materializing as far as any measurable rain or snow. But the rainfall amounts and the snowfall accumulations, most if not all of it, stays off to our southwest. There could be several inches of accumulation across parts of Texas into Oklahoma, but you can see some of that light snow pushing or extending back across the Ozarks, then another little band perhaps developing from Kansas City through about Wichita. And you can see where the measurable rain is going to end. It's mainly along and south of Interstate 70. So we won't discount the possibility of maybe a stray shower or two on Thursday, but those chances, that 20% chance is mainly south of I-74. Otherwise, we've got more sunshine and some pretty decent weather to finish out the rest of the week and head into the weekend. Daytime highs in the 40s, lows in the 20s. Now you may be wondering, is it going to continue? The answer, yes. Above average temperatures looking likely in the extended outlook, that 6 to 10 day outlook along with below average precipitation. So the nice and pleasant weather looks to continue for a bit longer. All right, this newscast will continue for a bit longer after the break. Keep your holidays in sync with free pickup on all your fresh favorites from Kroger. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Vonderheide Floor Coverings Company. We've been flooring customers for over 70 years. Just one call, that's all. Check out our reviews, our prices, and our inventory at MikeMurphyFloor.com. We're easy to do business with. 36 years in business and one store helps us keep our overhead low. We welcome the competition and price match often. Check out our prices at MikeMurphyFloor.com. We've said it before, price sells cars and low overhead makes that happen. Corey Dolan, owner and head pharmacist at Preckshot Compounding Pharmacy. We're proud to have the state's most advanced sterile and non-sterile compounding pharmacy lab. So when you're looking for the right CBD for you, Preckshot will always have the highest quality around. Our private label CBD is third party tested and our pharmacists can help you choose the right dose and discuss how it could interact with your other medications. If you want to learn more, come to the Junction City Shopping Center and ask your pharmacist. Preckshot, better health, better life. How does Dee's Paint and Body Shop fix your car like the damage never happened? Ah, uh, the amazing Denny never reveals his secrets, but it starts with the phone. Now you can send us pictures of your damage, get an estimate, and schedule your repairs without leaving your home. We can even make your car disappear and reappear with our pickup and delivery service. It's so easy, it must be magic. Go straight to Dee'sPaintAndBodyShop.com and let the magic begin. No tricks, just great service. 
I've always thought of myself as being a beautiful woman and my mouth was sinking in and I was in pain. If you're a person who's going to have to have dentures, go see Dr. Jim. He will put all of your concerns at ease. Dentures par excellence, restoring smiles. LaserUp's Mobile Gaming brings the party to you from the latest game consoles, VR racing, and even a virtual shooting gallery. So let LaserUp's Mobile Gaming level up your next celebration and let the experience begin. Ever wanted to learn to cook? The Cookery specializes in fun, hands-on classes taught by experienced chefs. We have ethnic-themed ladies' nights, corporate team building, kids' classes, and a whole lot more. Check out our website for details. The Cookery has something for everybody. For over 20 years, Garner's has been the one-stop shop for award-winning wings and incredible pizza. Whether it's dine-in or delivery, you can sit on the couch and still get some of the best food around. With thin crust, hand-tossed, and even Chicago style, you can't go wrong. Stop by or call today. Normal on the Storm Tracker Network, sponsored by orthopedic surgeon Dr. Lawrence Lee. This holiday season, use the Kroger app to get personalized coupons, weekly deals, and rewards like fuel points. So you can save big on exactly what you want no matter who you are. Kroger, fresh for everyone. You're watching WMBD News at 10. A Washington man is upset after someone tore down his Christmas lights last night. Jenny Bowman shows us why he says it's frustrating and says it's happening to more than one home. Neighbors in Washington are spreading their Christmas cheer despite those who try to tear it down. It's pretty frustrating. I mean, they, they've only been up for two days now. Michael Johnson says some of his Christmas lights were torn off his house Monday night. His security cameras caught video and pictures of this person, who he believes did it. I saw that a little after 11 o'clock last night, somebody pulled up right outside and ran up and just pulled them off the wall. Johnson says he's frustrated, but he's not the only one. His neighbor's house got vandalized, too. It's just like the Grinch, right, pulling the lights down. Michael Vujovic says he was still awake when it happened. When I heard a, I heard a noise, um, it sounded just like a brap, you know, just a, and I didn't know what it was. He says he heard the car drive off, but didn't connect it to the incident. He says it's disheartening to have broken lights and torn down decorations. You know, everybody's just trying to find a little cheer, especially given the state of the world at the moment. Both neighbors say it's concerning. It disrupts kind of your, your thoughts of security and safety and stuff a little bit. And that they don't know why someone would ruin their holiday fun. I think it's just uh, some kid who's just looking for, I don't know, way to be brag to his friends, I'm not really sure. It doesn't make any sense. In Washington, Janie Bullman, WMBD News. Coming up next, Bradley plays its home opener at Carver Arena in front of no fans. Kurt Pegler has the highlights next in sports. I'm Tim Sowers of LD Ford. I'm not going to advertise rebates and discounts that we cannot back up, like a lot of other dealerships do. But here's what we will do. We will get you every possible rebate you can get. And at Veldy Ford, you will get the biggest discounts available. And we will give you the very most for your trade. This is truly the best time for you to buy, the end of the year. Now that's giving you the best deal ever right here at Veldy Ford. We've been doing this for 64 years, and there's a reason why. I used to be just like them, just broken. They just need a path. Hi, I'm Bob Lindsay, and I'd like to thank all our customers for making us Peoria's best of the best three years running in new car, used car, and service. Thank you. It starts with what you're made of. It takes local knowledge and the tools to put the right product in the right place. It's built on trust, grit, and determination. Because it turns out, what it takes to make the best product is a lot like what it takes to make a farmer. Golden Harvest, rooted in genetics, agronomy, and service. Grow with Golden Harvest Seed through the Golden Advantage Program. 0% interest on extended terms. Bird in the Hands professional and compassionate staff are there for you. Whether you need home health, companion care, or adult day services, Bird in the Hand provides individualized care for yourself or your loved one. Discover why Bird in the Hand is called home by giving us a call at 309-467-5254. More turkey than you can handle? 
Cut the calories and shop the extended Black Friday sale at Furniture Row. That's more days to find huge savings store-wide. More days to shop amazing doorbusters. And best Tonight, Herman claims he's sleeping buy, on a bed of rice. Save. save 100 bucks for every thousand you spend or get free gifts with qualifying purchase. Plus, seven years no interest financing and free shipping right to your door. The extended Black Friday sale at Furniture Row. Hurry, ends Thursday. Do you have dry, cracked hands from constant washing, cold weather, and hard work? Try O'Keefe's Working Hands. It's America's number one selling hand cream for guaranteed relief for extremely dry, cracked hands. Also available in O'Keefe's for healthy feet. Guaranteed relief for extremely dry, cracked feet. Say goodbye to your mortgage or rent. Win up to $15,000 worth of house payments for an entire year. Log on to CIProud.com and visit Home for the Holidays to register to win. Peoria on the Storm Tracker Network, sponsored by American Pest Control. Get back in control. To let them know that this is a safe place, this is a place where they're welcome, and they will find love and encouragement, including tough love occasionally, uh, uh, because it's important to give folks who go through this program a sense that we are not judging them, that we care about them, and we want to help them move forward with their lives. When you donate to the Salvation Army Red Kettles, you provide local food, shelter, and so much more. So when you hear the bells ring, give generously. Tonight I sit down with President Barack Obama, or as close friends like me call him, President Barack Obama. Tonight on CBS. Now, your Sam Lehman Morton Sports Desk with Kurt Pegler. Without a doubt, the quietest, quietest it's ever been for a Bradley basketball game at Carver Arena. No fans in the stands for the game. The Braves taking on NAIA foe Judson University in their home opener. Quiet in the stands, but loud on the scoreboard and really loud on Bradley's defensive end. A weird sight to see the arena nearly empty for a BU game. It's just the players, the coaches, some staff members, and the media. The Braves take the floor with a 2 and one record. And early in the game, it's Ari Boya with a block. He tips it to Donye Kingsby, who starts the break and lobs to Elijah Childs, who slams down two of his 12. Bradley out to a 14-0 lead. Jayshon Henry also scored 12 points. He shows off his strength, slamming in traffic. Bradley led 31-3 and completely dominated the game. Henry to freshman Rink Mast scored in the foul. He had 11. And finally, more Bradley defense. True freshman Darius Hanna with his long arms. The steal. And the slam, 105-32, Bradley wins without its fan base. Last year was crazy with all the fans. And then this year with literally nobody in the stands, like there were a couple couple managers and some people, but it was it was so quiet and so empty. You just, just got to keep your mind on the game and just still got to win the game. The 73-point margin of victory is the largest ever for Bradley, and Coach Brian Wardle expects the Braves will announce a weekend game sometime tomorrow. ISU's home opener is tomorrow against Division III Greenville University. Dan Muller hoping his young players get some minutes against the run-and-gun style of the visiting team tomorrow. He says the key to the early season growth of his young players is being led by veteran teammates, even if those teammates are just slightly older than the freshmen. Love our young guys. I mean, absolutely love our young guys, their talent, their mindset. Terrific freshman group we've got, but they've got to be led uh, by the consistency of some of our older guys. And if, if that happens, then they're going to keep getting better. ISU tips at 5 o'clock Wednesday, but no fans will be allowed to watch the game from Redbird Arena. The Illini fill their empty spot on Saturday. They've added Tennessee Martin to the schedule. They'll play an 8 o'clock game Saturday night in Champaign. Right now, they've got a bigger catch in mind. Fifth ranked Illinois takes on number two Baylor tomorrow night in Indianapolis. It's the first time the Illini have played in a game featuring top five teams since 2005. A game that has had the Illini fired up and see how really, they, how well they can play. These are games that you know you you dream of playing in. Um, yeah, I mean this is this is the the main reason. One of the main reasons I decided to come back. It's a great challenge, and, it, and you want to find out where you're at, and, and uh, you want to see what, uh, um, again, what, what you can get exposed by or what, what you can do against quality opponents. Late start, 9 p.m. tip tomorrow, Illinois and number two Baylor. Two future Illini opponents in a big game tonight, eighth-ranked Michigan State and sixth 
rated Duke. It's all Spartans. Michigan State breaking the Duke pressure. Spartans find Joey Hauser for a corner three. It's part of a 14-3 run. And later, Aaron Henry to Julius Marble. And